Morning, Bob. How are you? Good morning, Wendy. Good morning. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you very much for allowing me to participate in this group. Oh, fantastic. Great to have you. Is this Rich? This is speaking, yes. Hi, Rich. I feel like I had interacted with you a couple years ago. Did uh -huh. you ever apply or interact with Rocky Mountain Poison and Drug Center? Uh, no, that does not sound familiar. <laughs> okay, then I probably didn't. There okay. is another person named Richard Walk who I had interacted with. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, and yes, so oddly enough, the only Richard Block that I know, I believe, is a magician. Uh, and so <laughs> I am okay. clearly not that person. Got it. <laughs> but. But uh, I'm sure there are other Richard Blocks that are out there. Uh, I, I believe there was a, a, a chemist from uh, a, a hundred or two hundred years ago uh, with with a, the same name or similar name. So a bit unusual. Yeah. Well, well, great to have so, you. Yeah, thank you. And um, so I'm happy to introduce myself to the group today. If you would like me to do that. Uh, let's just hold hold on that. I want to just uh, I see people just dialing in right now. So, uh, but but we'll we'll do introductions shortly. Sure. Good, good morning, this is Bilal. Good morning, Bilal. How are you, How doing? you doing? Good, good. Uh, is your is your identity intact? Well, so far no damage. Uh, okay. But you know. That well, keeps me nervous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. I'm sorry you missed out on the uh, conference. Uh, yeah, I know. I I really was hoping to meet you guys. Yeah. Uh, so I see your colleague just got online. Good morning, Logan. How are you? Good morning. Glad to have you on. Uh, and uh, good morning, Bob. Uh, Dr. Kali. Uh, looks like you're on as well. Good morning. Good morning, Richard. And uh, and Ravish, good morning to Ravish as well. And uh, Hi, so uh, and uh, Vipin, good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? Very well, thank you. Great to have you. Uh, have you have you dialed in before? Uh, no, uh, I was invited to to the patient subgroup, I guess, uh, but not to this particular oh meeting. okay oh good good uh, good to have you big because uh, i'm the chair of the identity working group in hyperledge oh i i'm looking at the i'm the, looking at the name and it's uh, boy this looks awfully familiar to me so <laughs> so welcome great to have you uh so well so that's it let's get started it is the top of the hour uh so first and foremost good morning to everyone i'm glad to have you on the call um uh, it, everyone should see uh, if you're if you're on the computer, you should see the agenda in front of you. Uh, it's the same agenda that's gone out uh, earlier, so no changes to that. Uh, and before we get started, I want to uh, just mention our antitrust policy. Uh, it's up on screen, so please review that. Uh, the upshot is uh, just be a good person, uh, and so uh, feel free to read that uh, at your leisure. Uh, so. Um, Normally, I do ask if someone on the call could please take notes. So would anyone like to volunteer that? And it's just, just sort of high-level notes so that I don't have to sort of stop and write or type as, as, as we're talking. I'd be glad to, Rich. Holy, holy cow, we have a whole bunch of folks. All right. <laughs> so I'm, I, I didn't hear who it was. So someone, I need a name. Uh, this is Logan. I'll be glad to. Oh, thank you, Logan. Excellent. Oh, hey, good morning, Alan. How are you, sir? I just saw you got on the call, too. 
Good morning. Yeah, no, I wasn't going to arm wrestle for it for the. Oh, oh okay. you were the other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thank you for that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, great. So uh, we do have a couple of new folks on the call. So I'd like to have them walk through introductions. So uh, Wendy was on the call first. So we'll take it off. Uh, Wendy, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Oh, sure. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Wendy Charles. I work at Denver Health uh, in, in Denver, Colorado. I have my PhD in health information technology, and I am an avid blockchain enthusiast, uh, particularly for Hyperledger. So my uh, specific interests pertain to academic research and uses of blockchain in higher education, as well as um, um, applications for um, clinical research. Outstanding. And, and uh, so what, uh, what aspect of, uh, of uh, Hyperledger? Are you looking at Fabric or Sawtooth or Indie? Um, right now, primarily Fabric um, for the benefit of the private permission aspects. Um, I, I, I can't say that I am very familiar with the others, except I know that Indie is being developed for identity. So um, I'm eager to learn from. Excellent. Okay. And, and, uh, and, and, and just, uh, how did you find, find out about us? Yes, I was recommended by John Carpenter of the blockchain, Government Blockchain Association. He recommended that I join. Oh, outstanding. Excellent. All right. Well, well, great to have you, Wendy. And, um, and thanks for calling in. Uh, and we'll walk, we'll talk a little bit more about this particular general meeting and how it works shortly. Uh, but, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Vipin, um, since since you're a little bit more familiar, and and uh, Wendy did mention uh, a little bit about Indy, uh, you want to introduce yourself. Uh, I don't I don't know if anyone really knows entirely about you, but you're you're sort of a, a, a hyperligious celebrity here. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that, but um, uh, I have been involved in hyperledger um, since the first, uh, you know, before it was constituted. So. Uh, I have a long history, but that doesn't make me special. Um, <laughs> well, well, you are a, a very good resource. Standard. Oh, oh. And go, go ahead, please. I'm, yeah, I'm a blockchainist. That that, that means that I basically uh, I'm involved in so many different aspects of it, but primarily a technologist, and I run a small uh, consulting. Uh, company uh, which focuses on um, technology and business bridging uh, technology strategy. Uh, I'm also the chair of the identity working group and I'm also involved in the uh, security and privacy uh, working group which is going to meet at 11. So uh, I thought I was mistakenly dialing in for that but I am glad to have found the healthcare working group. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just going to listen for now because uh, those two aspects, identity, uh, security, and privacy, are important to healthcare, I believe. Uh, and um, I'll, I'll just listen to what you guys are talking about. Excellent. Well, well. First of all, great to have you, and it's good that uh, you dialed in when you did. Uh, where Where are you calling from, by the way? New York City, Manhattan. Okay. okay, East Coast. Okay, good, good, good to know. Uh, okay, anyone else? Uh, it looks like I, I sort of recognize anyone else, but would anyone else like to introduce themselves? Um, it, feel free to do so. Okay, uh, yeah, everyone, I think we, we all sort of know each other. Otherwise, uh, I see very familiar names here. Um, and, uh, and that said, let's, uh, let's continue. So, so great to have uh, particularly Wendy on the call and Vipin as well. Uh, it's always great to have newer members uh, uh, joining us. So, and, and just, just as a sort of a, uh, a backgrounder, the way the general, uh, these general meetings work, uh, there, this is really just sort of a roll up of the work that we do in our ad hoc teams, as well as with our uh, subgroups. And we'll hear back, we'll hear from them shortly. 
Uh, and so I sort of run interference and, and sort of facilitate just to keep things rolling. And, uh, and then for those that are, those of you that are newer, the idea is to sort of slot you into some of the other teams or subgroups where the really, really the rubber sort of hits the road. And we'll, we'll talk about that shortly uh, with, with our leads talking uh, about the work that they're doing. Okay, well, so, so that said, uh, as far as community announcements go, I don't have anything particular to, to mention. Uh, I do have uh, an interesting opportunity, uh, and we'll talk about that more with St Stephen Elliott uh, down the road. It, it tends to focus a little bit more about interoperability, and so we'll talk in that context shortly. Um, so uh, does anyone uh, on the call want to, to do a shout out for some, something that's Hyperledger related? Okay, so uh, so let's get into the subgroup updates. Uh, so I don't know if Ben is on the call. So we do have a patient member subgroup, as Vipin had mentioned, uh, and we, we just recently handed over uh, leads. Uh, so so Marissa and I, Ayanna Roney uh, had to step away for work reasons. Uh, ben Gigi uh, took over uh, about a, oh about three or four weeks ago, maybe two or three weeks ago. Um, and uh, their group meets every other Friday, opposite this Friday, uh, at uh, nine o'clock Pacific versus our seven o'clock Pacific time. Uh, so our meeting last week uh, was really a discussion about uh, sort of what we wanted to do going forward. And, and sort of the backstory is we currently have a donor milk project, uh, which is really interesting. And so the use case for that is uh, when a mother gives birth to a child, sometimes prematurely, uh, and a mother can't produce milk at the time that the child is born, uh, she's looking for a, a milk resource. Uh, and so uh, the, the, the group, the subgroup was working for uh, quite some time with a company down in Southern California, uh, developing effectively uh, a sort of a special case supply chain uh, to manage uh, uh, the resource uh, or and the sourcing for mother's milk. Uh, so that has been going uh, going along quite well. And then we lost our, our customer, uh, which is really also our SME or subject matter expert. And so we've been trying to figure out how to, uh, how to sort of reconstitute uh, the, the project with, uh, with a subject matter expert or a resource on that end. Uh, and that's been the discussion going forward. And uh, as, as well, there's some talk about maybe uh, bifurcating uh, some of the work in the subgroup to continue to work on the donor milk project to the extent possible, and then to start looking for other opportunities uh, that are more patient-facing uh, in the healthcare community uh, using blockchain technologies. So, uh, and, and Vipin, that may have been partly where, uh, where your name uh, uh, came up. Uh, and I believe that, that may, it may have been Marissa that had contacted you originally regarding that. Um, so, uh, so for anyone that's interested, uh, feel free to contact myself or, uh, of course, if you're uh, familiar with our chat, uh, you can go up on Rocket Chat and, and contact either the, the leads directly or feel free to contact myself and I'll sort of uh, make introductions. Uh, and again, that, that subgroup meets every other Friday opposite this Friday. Uh, but it says 7 a.m. Pacific, it's 9 a.m. Pacific. Okay, uh, Ravish, uh, you want to talk about the payer subgroup? Sure, Rich. I'm sorry I was not there uh, last week uh, or the previous week when we had a meeting. But just a quick update. Uh, we have been kind of reforming, if you will, to uh, uh, kind of redefine the goals for the subgroup. So recently, last uh, from last meeting, we sent out a survey, we collected some information, we're looking at that, and then accordingly deciding on, uh, you know, how we move forward. And I am glad that um, the, uh, we, uh, I think it was, uh, uh, it was Whip and Wright, who was the identity um, chair who was on the call as well. Yes. Yeah, so Vipin, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you're here because a number of our discussions keep revolving around, you know, especially from pair perspective, the identity is the key to start and then, you know, move forward with any of the problem solving that we are talking about. So I would love to collaborate with you to, you know, share your thoughts, what you're thinking. And since the identity group is going to be much broader than just healthcare, what kind of things you are thinking about and 
what can be leveraged um, by the healthcare payers, if you will, to to help them with the security and privacy. So that would be a a great conversation. I would love to you know have you on on our subgroup to to talk about that. And um, on you know on on the second item, which was the paper that we started with, we are looking to you know kind of finish our thought on that and get that going as well. So, which these are the two you know key things that we are working through. One is reorganizing to you know on the topics that we'll be covering this year, and second is looking at finishing the the, the white paper that we started on regarding blockchain and application to healthcare payers. Excellent. And and how? Uh, what's your schedule for meeting? Uh, we meet every other Tuesday, uh, and I have uh, uh, there is a the SIG. A wiki page as well that has the information. Um, it's every two, uh, every other Tuesday, and we publish the information, um, you know, for the meeting. So I, you can go to the healthcare uh, payer subgroup SIG page, and you can see the meeting schedule there. Excellent. Okay, great. And so your next meeting is 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 it next week Tuesday or uh, a week from it, next? It's going to be the. It's going to be a week from next. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Ravish. Uh, so, so our next subgroup, uh, which is uh, just co coming online, is the healthcare interoperability subgroup, and Stephen Elliott. Uh, Stephen, you want to talk a little bit about that? I see Stephen. He's muted. Well, let's see. While well, Stephen, oh, here we go. Am I off mute? Yeah, there you go. Good morning. How are you? Am I off mute? Yeah, you're good. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to all the buttons. <laughs> yeah, technology. I've got the big screen and yeah. Anyway, uh, right. So the healthcare interoperability group is uh, as a group that was born from discussions around EMR, electronic medical records, and electronic health records and personal medical records and all those other things. <clears throat> And the focus, uh, the, the result of those conversations were many. Um, one was that uh, there's a specific interest in trying to put an episode of care and the knowledge artifacts that, that require that uh, representation on a blockchain and how to do that and do it in the most simple, straightforward method possible so we can understand Things like transactions and assets, uh, how those can be interoperable, how a consortium of maybe two health systems on a channel uh, can share information uh, in an interoperable way so that uh, the meaning of whatever procedure or treatment or, or observation or medication, whatever, on the blockchain uh, can be mutually understood between all members, including the patient. <laughs> curiously enough um, and this is just beginning to ramp up uh, uh, we have uh, everybody's been super busy since the beginning of the year uh, so we're just beginning to start to put together the charter for this so that we can get some kind of formal representation of what our goals are which is really just to end up with some code that that shows that we can exchange information between disparate health systems on a channel and, and how we do that. Things like policies, maybe we'll get into a policy of interoperability or whatever. And so we're gonna be doing this in a very streamlined, bottom-up type of fashion, uh, making a lot of assumptions about things like identity and security so that we can address those later and we just get to the critical issue of how we put this information on a blockchain and and how that uh, what that looks like, whether we need to have additional information on a side chain, all these kinds of questions will be the kinds of questions that we'll be we'll be uh, we'll be addressing and uh, will be the kinds of things that what we want to end up with at the end of the day is we know what the assumptions that we made we'll have to come back and deal with those but in the meantime. This is what we ended up with, and uh, hopefully, will provide a means to a service that other 
healthcare interested blockchains may be able to take a look at and adopt wholly or take a look at the idea and, and go in a completely different direction, but at least have some working uh, code at the end of all this to, to say, look, this is what we've got. So we're gonna be doing this through use cases um, <clears throat> and taking those and you know, building them out and describing how they're going to be done. Uh, one of the first use cases we'll probably take a look at will be a very simple case of an immunization. We'll take a narrative like a mother and her child, maybe not even the child, maybe just the mother. So, so we keep things simple. Um, go to a walk-in clinic and get a flu shot. And then weeks later, go to their primary care physician and he's able to see, or he or she, sorry, uh, is able to pull that record up and 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 take a look at it and see that that's part of now their, their medical history, even though it wasn't part of his, it was done by somebody else. So this will be, uh, I think, a, a bit different than some of the other working groups. So the other working groups are focused um, on larger top-down types of issues. And this one will be something that we want to take a very thin slice and just work it from the bottom up and <clears throat> see how, uh, what kinds of problems we run into, and, and what kind of success we can have in, in getting that done. Um, part of what we're going to be doing will be working with uh, inter healthcare interoperable SMEs, clinical informatics, uh, that uh, may be able to help us represent that. We'll, le we'll need people like clinicians, but we'll also need coders. Um, so this is a very engineering-focused group that uh, would like to you know, put something down and, and have a, uh, a means to show that uh, and how, that, how it's implemented and, and get other thoughts on you know, how to expand that. And then we'll be build out other types of use cases um, that will address maybe different facets like, like HIPAA and healthcare and, and governance and uh, consent management and all those other different types of questions. So yeah, this is uh, hopefully we'll start meeting Early March depends on how much work we get done this weekend and in the coming days. Um, but yes, we're very focused on getting this uh, uh, bootstrapped and uh, looking for anybody that uh, don't need to be a coder. But you know, the enthusiasm. We need documentation. We need uh, people that know blockchain so that uh, uh, they know what a peer is, what an order is, and how health uh, hyperledger actually works. That'll be part of what we'll be doing. Yeah, general announcement hopefully will be coming in uh, the next coming weeks and meetings will start, I'm hoping, in March. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so this is really exciting. And, and as, as Stephen points out, uh, so the other subgroups tend to work uh, top down. Uh, and this is uh, really more looking at it from a bottom up perspective. So top down sort of focusing around uh, uh, sort of deliverables or projects that are sort of uh, customer facing. Uh, whereas I think what Steven and, and his team are, are developing is something more bottom up, which is really services that can be sort of recycled, reused in other uh, similar contexts. Uh, and so this gets really, really interesting uh, very quickly. And so, so Steven, the plan then is really, I think uh, you're, you're in the process uh, right now of developing the charter. Uh, and as soon as the charter sort of gets uh, uh, complete, then, then we'll sort of put together a general announcement to membership. Does that sound right? Yep, that sounds about right. Uh, do you need any uh, anyone to help with the charter, or is that in hand? Well, I'm going to give it a shot this weekend, and then we can distribute it maybe to other people that, uh, and I don't know if Sonia's still available, or if some of the others that, uh, that there are other people that want to collaborate on that. Okay, and, and oh. I, see, I see Bob is on the call, so Bob Cowley was, was uh, in part instrumental in getting the subgroup spun up as well, so I see Bob on the call. Right, so yeah, we'll get the we'll get a we'll get a first cut at the draft for that, and uh, we'll see where we stand after that, and then we'll, perfect. We'll, we'll see how we proceed. Excellent. Very excited to hear about this. Uh, and uh, some of us were at the Hims conference last week, and this was a, a really interesting sort of discussion point because uh, uh, it's it's pretty evident that uh, there are folks that are very interested in understanding interoperability and how blockchain could, could help serve interoperability. So, uh, so this gets, 
really interesting real fast. So thanks for that, Stephen. Oh, and, and then sort of related to this, uh, and I shared this with Stephen uh, earlier, uh, it's interoperability, interoperability related, but, but not necessarily related to Stephen's uh, proposed subgroup. Uh, I did see an email cycle, and, and it's up online here. Uh, this is an opportunity for what's called a, an RFI, uh, and it's the interoperability of medical devices, data, and platforms uh, to enhance patient care, and this is a, a formal RFI that, that was released. Uh, I believe it went out last week. I just found out about it uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, However, it, it's interesting because this might be an interesting uh, opportunity for those of us that are interested in applying blockchain technologies to this particular use case. Uh, and that's why I'm, I'm introducing it here because it, it's, it's in some way related to, to the interoperability issue. Um, if anyone's interested in sort of following up or participating on that, uh, let me know. Um, I, I, what I'll do is I'll post this uh, URL out on the, uh, out on the chat channel. And uh, if we can rally uh, folks around this, I'd be happy to help facilitate that. Um, I'm just looking, when is our due date? Uh, on or before March 15th. So we only have a couple of weeks to act on that. So uh, anyway, so this, if anyone's interested or piques your curiosity, uh, we can sort of follow up on that as well. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about our team. So we have, uh, in addition to subgroups, we also have teams. The teams sort of are, are sort of purpose built to focus on, uh, on sort of more ephemeral things. And so we're right now, as probably most of you, uh, us know, we're in the process of migrating from an older uh, DocuWiki uh, platform to the newer Confluence Wiki. Uh, so aspects uh, of, uh, of our uh, Wiki structure are, are uh, on Confluence and some are still lingering on DocuWiki. Uh, but what's really great is we have a, a redesign team that's been sort of working to help facilitate that and, uh, and uh, Brian here and, and probably mostly Ravish uh, have been working that. Uh, Ravish, do you want to maybe give us a little bit of an update on where we are with that that effort? Yeah, um, Rick, so what happened was um, we were not able to get together earlier. I know Jim was trying to reach it. Um, I was trying to reach out to Jim and the schedule didn't work and um, I was not feeling well this week. However, yesterday we had a meeting. Um, I was planning to join a little bit late but could not. However, I did touch base with David. It looks like they had a good discussion and uh, they looked at various uh, wiki pages and what was decided was Kane is Kane offered um, you know since he's leading these social impact seg I believe he offered he will make changes to that based on looking at various sig pages and then come come back with all the ideas baked into that page to for us to review and once we agree on on that model then we can kind of trickle that down to all the sick pages. Uh, that's that's the overall that was the overall idea because I think every SIG has their own thought process and there are some goods um, you know goodness in each one of them from from different perspective. So that's where we are we are are right now. I believe David is going to schedule another call to kind of get together once Kane you know gets his updates in his wiki. Excellent. Okay well good to hear uh, and, and and yeah, so so there's a two two part uh, activity here, uh, and and basically, if anyone has uh, experience using Confluence, uh, that those are sort of the resources we're looking to use right now. And uh, feel free to contact Ravish. Uh, and so, what we're really d doing is, uh, as we're sort of migrating over to the Confluence platform, we're also trying to sort of establish sort of a uh, a more consistent uh, sort of view or feel across SIGs, and the, the rationale behind that is, uh, and, and Vipin sort of uh, mentioned this earlier, there's, there's a lot of interactivity uh, sort of cross-cutting between SIGs and particularly working groups as well, and so we wanna make that apparent to, to membership as, uh, as they may have to sort of work across SIGs in order to get some of their work done. And so to facilitate that, uh, I, I wanted to make sure that all the SIGs sort of had a common sort of look and feel, not necessarily uh, absolutely the same, but similar. So it's easier for membership to sort of transact in a cross-cutting way. Uh, and so that's that's the work that Ravish and his team are doing. And uh, and uh, it, it, my my suspicion is it'll take a little bit of time, but I think we're getting there. So thank you for that, uh, Ravish. Appreciate it. 
Um, okay, we also uh, have been doing some work in the academic research space, uh, and I, and I, uh, Logan, yeah, there's Logan, Logan's on the call. Uh, uh, Logan, you want to talk a little bit about that, or do you want me to introduce it, or how, how so, do you want to approach this? Yeah, so, uh, uh, what was the gentleman's name who's actually driving the, that, that effort uh, so that's that we a, talked to? Yeah, that's Adrian, Adrian Berg. So, uh, so I'll give you a little bit of history, and then, then Logan, maybe you can sort of give us an update. Uh, so, so the the academic research group uh, is is really uh, just a handful of folks. Uh, uh, this this sort of kicked off back, and I want to say October uh, or so of last year. And the and the gist of it is, uh, we we noticed that in healthcare, healthcare tends to be very academically wedded. Uh, and so uh, things tend to move in the same way uh, in in the academic space uh, as as they do for for healthcare. Meaning that healthcare will look to processes that exist in academia, which means anything new that comes along tends to be vetted through more formal channels, uh, which are uh, white papers uh, or papers that are peer reviewed through uh, journals and and approved organizations. So, uh, so these these sort of academic aspects uh, in the healthcare space haven't went, really been addressed for uh, the use of blockchain technologies quite yet. Uh, in part because the technologies are still quite new, uh, and you know that infrastructure hasn't really been completely uh, sort of built out. It, it is happening, uh, but it's a slow process. And the value of this, of course, is that if we can sort of help manage uh, this, these academic research uh, resources, um, we'll be able to get uh, some value or validation of blockchain technologies in healthcare by virtue of using the same mechanisms that um, uh, the healthcare community has been using for years, which is these, these peer review papers. So, so this team is really looking at ways to sort of uh, sort of approach this in a way to help uh, sort of vet the process, maybe facilitate the process. So it's easier for people in the healthcare space that are interested in blockchain technologies can, can do, do their own due diligence and they have at their, uh, at their disposal uh, these, these uh, very well peer-reviewed peer papers uh, to, to use as resources for making sort of these objective determinations as to whether it, uh, you know, uh, any particular platform is better than another platform given their, uh, their particular use case or context. Um, so that said, uh, we met, uh, I think it was just, just maybe a week or two ago, um, and, uh, and Logan has been involved in uh, sort, of, sort of summarizing some of the work that we want to do going forward. So, so Logan, do you want to take it from there? Yeah, uh, thanks, Rich. So very specifically, we're, we're focusing in on academic medical centers. It's a very specific term. There's over a hundred of them in the U.S. Um, an academic medical center is defined by uh, three things, really. Number one, it's 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 a practicing medical institution. It's usually hospitals um, that deliver care to people. Number two, it's a teaching facility. Uh, in other words, there are med schools, medical schools that are attached or are affiliated with those hospital practices. And most importantly, as Rich mentioned, uh, number three, uh, they conduct medical research and they publish. And so uh, having had some experience in this field working with AMCs in the past, um, we're going to, we've got a list of basically people that we can approach and we're currently defining how we want to approach them to essentially work with them to get some peer reviewed research published um, very specifically, um, uh, it's of note uh, to uh, Ravish, um, that generic, um, oh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the generic episode of care that I published to you is, in effect, the same thing that we're going to be approaching academic medical centers with, right? It's, you know, it's as uh, I think Bilal mentioned or uh, defined in an earlier paper that we jointly worked on, um, U.S. healthcare is is quite disparate in terms of how it's delivering healthcare. The, you know, there's primary care providers, specialists, hospitals, and ERs, uh, pharmacists, 
Uh, there's public health institutions, family and caregivers, and community resources that all could potentially be involved in delivering of health care. It touches Stephen's problem of obviously interoperability. Uh, we're very focused on, you know, let's, let's approach academic medical centers that already have a significant piece of those deliveries, uh, delivery agents, if you will, and to figure out how we can work with them to make something that not only can deliver, uh, show the value of blockchain, but also uh, engage the patient uh, in a way that uh, the, this, the medical records that are involved in this episode of care are actually um, count on the patient to be part of those care team roles in delivery. Uh, does that make sense to everyone? I'd love to open this up for comments or questions. So, so excellent uh, summary, uh, Logan, and, and I think you're in the process of putting together sort of a, a summarizing page or two to sort of baseline the work that's been done thus far and, and plans for next steps. I am. Uh, so, uh, so when Logan gets that uh, published, uh, we'll make that available to membership. And so anyone that's interested in uh, sort of working on this team, uh, you know, feel free to contact either myself or Logan or Adrian. Uh, and again, you can uh, use the chat channel and contact us directly or feel free to contact me through, through email uh, and I'll make introductions. Uh, and yeah, so, th so this gets really interesting. And, and again, this is just uh, really an interest out of those of us in membership uh, that, that see the need for you know, validating or vetting uh, blockchain technologies in the healthcare space, particularly just knowing that healthcare tends to be very uh, established or particular in in their process for evaluating uh, anything new, uh, including technology. So, so we want to try to make that uh, make that engagement as easy and as facile as as possible. So that's that's the purpose of, of this team here. Uh, okay, well, thanks, Logan. I appreciate it. And uh, and Adrian is often on the call. I know he's not today. Uh, and special thanks to Adrian for his work as well. Uh, Okay, uh, so uh, we'll, we'll get to some, some old business just for those of you that are fairly new to the group. Uh, so if, uh, if you're interested in, in getting published, uh, consider that we have over a thousand members in this uh, special interest group. Uh, those thousand members uh, obviously are sort of pre-filtered, so we know that they have uh, an interest uh, in, in healthcare, uh, and further they have interest in blockchain technologies, and even further still, uh, we can make a, a pretty good assumption that they have an interest in using uh, the helper, Hyperledger platforms uh, to, to do some of that work. So, and the reason why I say that is that's, that's over a thousand folks that may be interested in, in collaborating with you on a paper that you may be interested in writing, uh, or they may have a, a, a paper that they want to, to write and that you may want to collaborate with them. Uh, and so uh, what we've done is uh, there's, we have a, a page that uh, we've put together, uh, which is really, it's sort of crowdsourcing the concept here. Uh, and let me see if I can move this out of the way. So I, I sort of kicked, it us, uh, kicked this off a couple of weeks ago. And, and really, this is, this is a, a kind of a, a true story. Uh, I, I wrote an article, and my editor has it. I don't know where it's been published yet. Uh, I wrote an article uh, about blockchain technologies, um, and I thought to myself, you know, this was done uh, more or less sort of in, in a vacuum, and yet I still uh, should have, uh, and of course this is hindsight, which is always 2020, should have thought, well, gee, I've got over a thousand people that I could tap and, and have them collaborate with me to, to add real value and extra sort of perspective to, to the article. So. So this is a way to sort of get around that issue and to say, hey, if you've got an idea, feel free to use this. You can you know, edit this wiki page directly uh, and make an announcement out on, out on the ch uh, chat channel or through our listserv, our email, and say, hey, I'm interested in write a, writing a paper about X, whatever the topic may be. You can sort of have a, a, a thesis of just a kind of a one-liner to maybe get people interested in, in what, you're, uh, what you wanna sort of discuss in that article or white paper. And then just add to that uh, collaborators, and then you know take it offline uh, once you get to a point where you think the uh, you're ready to go. So this is just really just a simple exercise or a mechanism uh, that allows people to sort of rally around common themes 
uh, if, if you're interested in writing uh, on the topic of uh, Hyperledger in the healthcare space. So this page is, uh, is available to you. It's through the wiki. Uh, you can edit it directly. And again, feel free to do so. Uh, the, again, the, the whole purpose of that is to make it easier for those of us that, that are interested in, in uh, writing and getting the word out uh, to, to sort of the blockchain uh, technologies community. Uh, and, and so that you, know, you, can, you can help to educate. Uh, uh, there are an awful lot of folks out there that still believe blockchain is literally Bitcoin. So we, we're, we're, <laughs> we need to dispel that. Uh, okay, and then uh, we are also uh, coming up close to uh, the, the Kidney X Redesign uh, Dialysis Prize, uh, which is a competition uh, that is, it's a national competition. Uh, myself and Alan Bachman have been sort of working this issue uh, and uh, it's due next week, so we're coming up to the end. Um, so Alan and I have been talking, uh, I don't know, Alan, let's see, the last time we got together was, was it Monday of this week? Yep, yep. Okay, so uh, I do have some information to share uh, with, well, with, 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 the, with the group here, but although I'll, I'll, I'll probably take it offline with, with Alan, but the upshot is I had a, a very good meeting uh, yesterday with uh, our uh, chief medical officer at Northwest Kidney Centers and just start, sort of a quick backgrounder. I know some of you are familiar with, with sort of my interest in healthcare, but uh, I, I am active in the kidney care community uh, out here in Seattle. Uh, kidney care really meaning dialysis uh, or, or uh, chronic kidney disease management. And as it just so happens, uh, kidney dialysis was invented uh, here in Seattle in 1960. Uh, and then in 1962, uh, Northwest Kidney Centers, uh, which is currently now the third largest not-for-profit uh, kidney care dialysis center in the United States, is also located here in Seattle, uh, as well as an organization that the Northwest Kidney Centers spun out for the sake of research called the Kidney Research Institute. Uh, they're here in Seattle as well. And so when this particular competition arose, it seemed, uh, seemed like a, a, a good idea to try to uh, get involved in that and apply, think about applying blockchain technologies to the kidney care space. Uh, so, so that said, uh, I had a really excellent conversation with uh, the CMO of Northwest Kidney Center. She had some great insight and ideas on how to sort of uh, apply blockchain technologies uh, to some of the pressure points that exist in particularly in home dialysis, which is where a patient does dialysis at home rather than in, in a center. Uh, so, so Alan, I'll, we'll take it offline, but my, my gut would be, I don't know if we're going to have time to get the, the paper published uh, or put together by our deadline. However, that said, uh, I got a lot of enthusiasm uh, to try to continue this conversation. In fact, uh, 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 Suzanne, our, our CMO, uh, has really has asked that we uh, find a way to maybe connect with her uh, beyond this particular competition because she she sees a lot of value in this thread of of, of discussion. So, uh, but I'll, like I said, I'll, we'll, we can talk offline a little bit more in, in depth about some of the specifics. Uh, yeah, I think I think you know I think this is great. Um, CVS Health is uh, really making some big movements in uh, making improvements for uh, you know kidney care. You know, doing some IoT things where blockchain can help and um, some of the conversations, you know, you and I have had um, have opened my eyes to, you know, things that we can do to improve the member experience. Right. Um, and, I, and I think um, I, I took a stab at drafting up a, a submission already. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> trying to look at the, uh, the why you would want to use blockchain, right? You know, it's not just about chain washing a solution. It's about, Let's have a solid um, use of blockchain. You know, we're not sprinkling it everywhere, um, but let's focus on just the member experience, right? What can we do for the member without them even realizing that they're using blockchain? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and I'll just I'll just uh, very quickly note that uh, Suzanne was really interested in introducing IOTs into that uh, into that sort of uh, technology solution. Uh, and she got very excited about that, or IOMTs. Uh, so IOT is Internet of Things. IOMT is sort of a newer f sort of turn of a, a, a phrase, Internet of Medical Things. Uh, and so, so that, 
that really got her interested. Uh, and like I said, I, I think we there's a, a potential for sort of longer term discussions. And my suspicion, and I'm probably getting ahead of myself a bit, is I, I imagine we may decide to spin out a subgroup that sort of focuses around this particular use case because uh, it seems to be so uh, so full of potential here. So um, anyway, more, I, you know, I'm, I'm jumping the gun on that a little bit. Uh, but again, uh, thanks, Alan, for your work, and, and we'll try to talk offline uh, very quickly about the, the, the stuff. Uh, uh, so uh, and, and of course, anyone that's on the call that is interested in participating in this, you know, feel free uh, to, to sort of ping uh, either Alan or myself. Uh, I do have notes that I put together that are up uh, on the Google Drive, and I'll I'll, I'll push those out uh, through the, the chat channel, uh, so that anyone can can have access to them. Uh, okay, so so moving on, so that's exciting, uh, and and of course you know, good things I think are going to come out of that. Um, as well, for for people that haven't already, uh, our survey I think I extended our survey out an extra week or so, uh, and I. I believe we're looking at end of month for the survey to close. Uh, I think we have probably uh, about 30 folks that have responded to date, which given that we have over a thousand members, that's, that's terrible. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> we should at least have a 10% response rate. Uh, and so please, if you have not taken the survey yet, uh, please do so. Uh, the link is available where you see it uh, up on the thing there. And uh, the value really goes to making sure that uh, anything that you're, you have a particular interest in is caught or captured in the survey so that we can sort of uh, make changes to the way that this particular uh, uh, SIG works and functions and that we're doing the things that, that you see value, uh, the, the most value in collectively. Uh, has anyone not taken the survey? Are, are you willing to say as much? Yes, I haven't taken the survey. Sorry. So oh, that's okay, Vipin. You're you're okay. I'll I'll give you the pass. Mm -hmm. But anyone else that's on the call that hasn't taken the survey, you ought to. Uh, so yeah, I'll I'll admit this is Wendy. I'll admit I haven't done it, but I will. A, yeah, and and you're you're fairly new, so I, I I'll I'll give you the pass <laughs> as well. So okay, so anyone that hasn't, yeah, please please do so. It's it really is important to us because really. Uh, given that we have such uh, such a large membership and, and a very s small sort of vocal group of people that are active in this community, uh, you know, your your value becomes significant in the direction of and, and the voice of, of the special interest group. So so that becomes important that that you do participate. Uh, okay, great. So so moving on to something that uh, uh, some really interesting news. Uh, we did have uh, the, the HIMSS conference, uh, which was last week, uh, and I can never remember, but it's uh, Healthcare Information <laughs> Management Something Society, blah, blah, blah. Some, who, who knows what this, anyone know what this really is? Oh, good grief. All right, well, anyway, it, it's a healthcare conference, and it focuses around IT. That's really sort of the takeaway, and it's huge, 45,000 people to that, uh, to that end. Uh, it's sort of the most significant uh, healthcare conference in this context uh, internationally, uh, and so uh, I was uh, I was uh, uh, lucky enough to go. Uh, we had uh, probably a contingent of about 15 or so folks from this uh, healthcare SIG that were uh, that participated in the conference. Uh, I went through uh, through Hyperledger, so I spent most of my time at the Hyperledger booth. Uh, and and talked uh, at length about uh, you know the context of blockchain technologies in healthcare, uh, and and of course uh, Hyperledger isn't particularly uh, healthcare centric, but this part this particular special interest group happens to be so, and as a result uh, we really serve as an interface to that healthcare community, and it was really amazing uh, from my perspective. Uh, given that I had attended last year as well, uh, the, the, this past year, the delta between understanding in the healthcare community of blockchain technologies in this one year is absolutely stunning, uh, particularly uh, you know, using the backdrop of, of healthcare, sort of the progress of health, healthcare technologies being as, as glacial as it tends to be. Uh, I was very, very surprised at how quickly people have come up to speed 
uh, on, on healthcare technology, uh, on blockchain technologies in particular. Uh, so last year, just to put some context to this, last year, uh, people came up to us and sort of, you know, would, would sidle up to us and say, well, I know I need to know about this thing called blockchain, but what is it? And so we were talking at a much more abstract, abstract level. Uh, and uh, this year, people are fully cognizant of the technologies and we're asking very, very good converse, uh, questions uh, and have, having very good conversations that were much more granular and much more informed than I think most of us uh, had even expected, which is phenomenal. Um, so I, I'm just, uh, just a kind of a quick pass on attendees this morning. I don't know, uh, I know Bilal, uh, you sort of lived on the Florida area. I don't know if anyone else actually uh, was on, it, that's on the call was there. Uh, that could add to it. Um, what I'm gonna, what I'm hoping to do is uh, a couple of our more active members, uh, and I know it's difficult for them to to make this particular call. Uh, we'll try to get some some uh, notes together. Uh, two things, however, I'll I'll add that to me are, are were significant uh, threads of conversation that seem to come up uh, more than once. Uh, number one, uh, use cases. We got at, we were asked. Uh, very often, very frequently, what are your use cases that you might uh, be uh, wanting to demonstrate? Uh, or do you have use cases that you can share with us? Uh, now, to me, that's a little unusual because uh, it seems like you're trying to sort of shoehorn te blockchain technologies into a, a specific mm -hmm. instance. Uh, however, it, it is, like I said, it was pretty clear to me that uh, we had so many people that were asking about use cases. So, so here's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm to open this up to a little bit of discussion. Uh, I, I thought we used to have use cases floating around, uh, yeah, but let's assume we don't. Um, I'd like to see if we can maybe get a, a, at least an ad hoc team together to maybe start developing uh, healthcare use cases using blockchain technologies. Uh, and specifically some of our platforms, Fabric, uh, Sawtooth, or Indy. Uh, anyone else want to participate in that? I, I, like I said, I, my interest is in trying to serve the need of what I heard in last week's uh, discussions uh, from, from uh, conference attendees. This is Logan. I'd love to participate in that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so again, like I said, it was very, uh, it was pretty clear to me that this, this, you know, that this seems to be a, a deficit that, that we as a, as a, as a SIG uh, have here. I, it, I, I don't, I don't see a uh, tremendous value in it, but I do understand that we learn by example. And I think the way that's maybe the proper way to sort of see how these use cases get used um, is that, you know, if we, if we present enough uh, disparate use cases that people may be able to sort of infer from that where there is value, where they may see value in blockchain technologies. Again, to me, that seems, that seems a little bit backwards, uh, but, uh, but again, that's, that's what we're being asked. By the way, um, the uh, hypology community is supposedly assembling a uh, um, set of use cases. So instead of doing the work over, I suggest you contact Gordon Graham, who's the technical writer for uh, Hyperledger and who possibly has a handle on this. I'll send him a note as well. Oh, excellent. Uh, and, uh, you know, and there was a presentation of, of a pretty high, level, uh, pretty high profile use case at the Hyperledger Global Forum in Basel. It was a, a big healthcare, com uh, healthcare sort of service uh, provider uh, who talked about the application of Hyperledger Fabric. And that is a very uh, extensive. Uh, and in fact, it was a CEO of this particular company. I, I don't remember the name right now, but I can dig it up and set it up or set it up on the, on the uh, channel. Uh, the other couple of things that came up, which mentioned my name, one was uh, Ravish talking about uh, the identity use case. Um, I mean, identity uh, concerns or identity uh, interests 
from this group. And I think you, you guys should come to the identity working group calls as well. I mean, if, if you can spare some time, it's every alternate Wednesday. Uh, the last one was this Wednesday, but so it'll be two weeks from uh, two weeks Wednesday from last Wednesday uh, at noon um, in New York, uh, which means it's 9 a.m. So, you know, a lot of subjects get talked about. And one of the most interesting ones was about the uh, concerns that this gentleman, I think his name is Stephen, was talking about with respect to the uh, uh, sharing or interoperating the patient information uh, between uh, different uh, providers or even different uh, uh, entities in the healthcare ecosystem. Uh, the uh, groundwork or a foundation provided by Indy will help you because this is a, about claims processing. And I do not know whether the patient is fully in control of uh, releasing this information uh, because uh, ostensibly that is the case, but in practice, it doesn't seem to be the case, meaning like the doctors seem to be able to exchange information, especially if they are in the same hospital, uh, about the patient uh, without express consent. And in this case, the, uh, uh, the you know, the Indy case, the claims are uh, controlled by the, by the patient. And uh, we are also starting this project called Envoy, which is about exchanging information on the edge. It's an edge protocol. So really speaking, the uh, PII, which is personally identifiable information, which might uh, include health records, uh, it says should not be deposited on the blockchain, but rather in an ancillary system and then uh, exchanged out of band. But uh, the proofs uh, are deposited on the blockchain. So, uh, you know, you can then examine the proof and say that, uh, you know, these things were done. Anyway, uh, instead of going on and on about this, uh, I, I'm basically what I'm saying here is that there is a lot of interesting work going on in other groups that may have bearing on what you guys are talking about. So instead of uh, reinventing everything, uh, you know, we should uh, try to build bridges and try to get information from other groups so that we can bootstrap ourselves um, in a much better way. Excellent, well, good input. Uh, and thanks for that, Vipin. Uh, and, and yeah, so, so for those people that are interested, uh, to Vipin's point, uh, sitting in on his uh, working group uh, uh, meetings would be would be helpful. And of course, also, uh, if you sort of want to wade in, uh, there's also a channel up on Rocket Chat that you can sort of uh, sort of introduce yourself, sort of wade into the into the conversation that way as well. So thank you for that, Vipin. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. So, so the so the last point uh, regarding the conference uh, had to do with governance, which really uh, was also a little bit of a surprise. Uh, had 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 more to do with uh, how do you manage a blockchain solution once you've got it implemented, and this tends to be more of a longer term uh, consideration uh, that's that tends to center around uh, something called DevOps, which is really sort of the ongoing uh, maintenance and upgrade of of the of the solution. Uh, so this may be something else that we want to talk uh, more about. I, I'm mindful of our of our time. We're coming up to the top of the hour. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll add this to uh, next uh, our next agenda and pick up uh, pick up the conversation on this point uh, two weeks from today, which is our next meeting. So that would be Friday, uh, March eighth, which is seven seven o'clock uh, Pacific time. And again, for those of you that are fairly new, we meet every other week. Uh, so every second week uh, on a Friday, seven o'clock Pacific time, and uh, in, in the morning, AM, 0700. So, uh, and again, uh, you have many, sort of many ways to communicate outside of just these meetings. Uh, we have the listserv or the email thread that you feel free to make use of. Uh, I, I, you know, we have some really very, very bright and intelligent folks 
uh, that, that we want to be able to communicate that information to membership. So if you've got an idea or you have questions, feel free to use the listserv. Uh, and also, we also have the Rocket Chat channel, uh, which is available. Uh, really, all you need to do is have, make sure your Linux Foundation ID uh, is, is set up so that you can just log in and go from there. Uh, with that said, any final comments or thoughts before we close out for the week? All righty. Okay. Well, good. So thanks, everyone. Uh, have a great weekend, and we will see you back here in exactly two weeks. Thank you, Rich. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.